Antoine Cook, born April 28, 1987. Today's feature had a very important decision to make after his freshman season was done at Ohio State. Take the money and roll the dice on a professional career in the NBA or stay in school another year allowing his game to develop further, giving him the chance at a better spot in the draft and likely a better chance to succeed with the keys to the program and experience. It's a decision many prospects are faced with, the choice to leave early, risking it being too soon, or living in content at least getting the opportunity to see your dream come true now rather than later where anything can happen preventing it. For Daquan Cook, the choice was easy. He left Ohio State with both feet in the draft early on in the process after his draft stock had plummeted from possible top 10 lottery pick going into Ohio State ranked above Russell Westbrook in a loaded high school class, the number two shooting guard in the country, to a sinking draft stock after struggling with consistency during the second half of the college season, ending in the worst way on a national stage scoring two points and playing just nine minutes in the championship game, bench to close it out. At that point, scouts called it a wake-up call for Daquan that he obviously hit snooze on and still left school early anyway. He gambled and some say the turnout wasn't so bad. He played six seasons in the NBA and made an estimated 12 million in total throughout his career. Not many can say in their mid-twenties they had at least six to eight million in the bank and accomplished every Hooper's dream of making it to the NBA. Others would have rather he took the longer route and stayed in school at least another season before putting himself in a position he got there but wasn't ready and wound up being a journeyman good enough to sign a rookie contract and another NBA minimum thereafter but quickly out the league because that development you left on the floor becoming a one and done came back to remind you how short-sighted that decision really was. He wound up being drafted 21st overall, beginning on a Miami Heat team he'd have to play a certain role on that typecasted him as one-dimensional for the rest of his short career. Leaving high school, Daquan Cook had most of the tools that made a good NBA shooting guard. He was athletic, usually going above the rim for assisted or unassisted finishes, had breakout speed on the wing or handling the ball on the fast break, and he could shoot the lights out once his feet were set. He was just about ideal for the league, but for these reasons, things didn't play out as hoped. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to D-Money Sosa underscore DMG on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Daquan Cook is a 6'5 shooting guard from Dayton, Ohio that began playing basketball since 3-4 years old as he remembers. For him, it began as part of his environment as most of his family members played the game in some capacity. All his friends did as well and whenever the TV was turned on, there was a Chicago Bulls game with Michael Jordan performing his signature highlight dunks. Daquan began setting his goals to make the NBA one day and by his senior year in high school was well on his way. He averaged 25 points, 6 rebounds and 5 assists, winning a Division II state championship and becoming a McDonald's All-American, ranked 14th overall in the country and second best shooting guard. The 2006 high school class was loaded at the top and Cook was right there. He decided to join Mike Conley and Greg Oden at his hometown Ohio State, completing Thad Mata's Thad 5. Stunt number 1. Needed that extra year I always say it's difficult to say something like this, especially when said player actually made the NBA and was a first round pick with guaranteed money in his pockets coming into the league. But it goes back to the question asked earlier, would you rather take the bag now, relatively small compared to a bag you could make giving it one more year of development and a chance to move up in the draft and be paid more money, be a team's focused investment and come in ready to add as much as possible to a team, increasing your value. To me, there's pros and cons to either decision as staying could put you in a situation you don't perform up to the expectations and completely fall off as a draft prospect 
especially seeing as Daquan Cook already had sort of an underwhelming freshman season where he failed to score at least 10 points in a game the last month plus of the season and the last two months double figures just twice. This was a guy some scouts said could have made the jump straight from high school to the pros if the rules still allowed. This is how much hype Daquan Cook had at that point and even though his play only led to an average of 9.8 points in 19 minutes, he was still seen as a possible first round pick, mainly off potential alone. Cook was a guy that looked good in workouts because he was just the right height for the era's shooting guard. He was an above the rim guy and he had a beautiful set three pointer that he accurately hit at a 41% clip. But beyond shooting, Daquan Cook didn't develop much other skills, once he would've had he stayed when Greg Oden and Mike Conley left. Greg was seen as a generational center and clear number one pick, and Mike Conley played so well to surprise, he was considered a top 10 pick as well. Cook, some even said second round was his final destination. Pat Riley made a play to trade up for the Sixers pick, and he came in on a D-Wade Heat team primarily used for set shooting and he never got to develop his individual game further, making him extremely one-dimensional and easy to scout. Stunt number two, no other additions. When Daquan Cook got to the NBA, it's like his development just froze and locked in the same place for the next six years. He was a shooter and that's it. Had Ohio State with free reign now that Odin and Conley were gone, Cook would have had the ball in his hands much more, as clearly the leader of the team, able to play the first option role, putting him in positions he'd have to learn to add other things to his game. Things like his ball handling and creating for teammates, which was virtually non-existent because he never really got the chance to practice that, leaving ahead of that opportunity. Yes, he was drafted, and yes, first round, but when he got there, he was such an easy player to scout, as you knew he was going to shoot the ball, or at most two dribbles before pulling up for a long two. He couldn't create his own shot consistently because he never had to at any point in college with Conley dominating the ball and Odin lamped in the paint closing up drives and attracting attention. Cook was a shooter and not much else. He didn't block shots, get steals, more turnovers than assists, and shrinked as the college season got more interesting toward the end of the year. For an NBA shooting guard looking to stick around, these missing pieces to his game left him easily guardable and an expendable player. Stun number three, career cut short. Because of those missing attributes he failed to allow time to develop, Daquan Cook's NBA career lasted just six seasons where he dealt with injuries and lack of opportunity, starting with the Heat who already had superstar D-Wade on the team at shooting guard who dominated possessions and only needed a spot up shooter for bailout passes and Daquan Cook was Pat Riley's guy. He won the three point shooting contest at the All-Star in 2009 with many hoping this was when he turned the corner and begin to produce. After that year, Cook's career would plummet and plummet to finally averaging two points in eight minutes a game with the Bulls, playing his last 33 games in the league at just 25 years old. His career was shortened mainly because he didn't develop any other skills and never got to the point he became more valuable than the other options over the years. He could shoot, but he was extremely streaky, like one season shooting over 40% from three to others as low as 28% and 24% just a few years later before entering his prime. That kind of player are a dime a dozen as no NBA team made any bones about him leaving the NBA market for an overseas journey. Not to mention being on Miami and OKC early on, both teams not needing him to do anything other than spot up shoot to aid their stars. All in all, Daquan Cook got the bag as they say and for some that's good enough but for me I wish he stayed and developed more because he did have potential if he could round his game out a bit more. He bet on himself and for these reasons he crapped out the league sooner than expected. He played years overseas where he did have a successful career but moved around every year, last playing in 2020. 
salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.